Ask anyone to name a constellation, and they'll probably say the Big Dipper. And anyone living in the Northern Hemisphere who can draw a spoon generally can recognize it in the sky. But I'm about to shake the foundations of your reality with a level of pedantry that at bare minimum should earn me a solid shaking and possibly even a face punch or two. The Big Dipper is not and never will be a constellation. It's an asterism, a familiar pattern of stars in the sky. There are 88 constellations and the Big Dipper isn't one of them. It's a part of the constellation of Ursa Major. In fact, the handle of your familiar spoon is actually the tail of the Great Bear. Now that I've lulled you to sleep with some painfully uninteresting specifics, which you can bust out to make yourself unpopular at your AV club pop and chip parties whenever somebody refers to the Big D as a constellation. I strongly suggest whatever it is you tell them, you start off with actually. And now you've made it this far, I shall reward you with what you're seeking. Just how big is that Big Dipper? There are a couple of ways to skin this bear's tail. We can say its size relative to the amount of sky real estate it occupies, or we can do the end-to-end -end Kessel Run. Now you might be surprised to know how much of the sky it takes up. Astronomers measure the sky in degrees. 360 degrees takes you all the way around the sky, and our moon measures half a degree across. Dubé and Merrick are the pointer stars in the Big Dipper. You could put 11 full moons side to side in the gap between them, and about 40 full moons from the bottom corner of the Dipper to the end of its handle. So the Big Dipper measures about 20 degrees across. Here are some easy ways to measure sizes. Your pinky nail, held at arm's length, is half a degree. Three fingers is five degrees. Your fist is 10 degrees. Rocking out with the devil horns is 15 degrees, and hang loose on the Inspector Gadget phone is 25 degrees. Trekkers and Trekkies may prefer to use the Vulcan Live Long and Prosper measurement, which is about the same number of degrees you are from getting a romantic companion. So stem to stern, how big is our giant celestial ladle? I know, you know, these things aren't in anything resembling a straight line. Some of the stars are closer, and some of the stars are further out. If you could make a box that completely surrounded them, how big would it be? The closest star in the asterism is Megrez at 58 light years, and the most distant is Dubé at 124 light years. And yet, they all look roughly the same brightness. This means that Dubé is a much brighter star than Megrez. It's just further away. And because these stars are moving in the sky, what we see as the Big Dipper today didn't always look this way. 150,000 years ago, the Big Dipper looked like this. And in 150,000 years from now, it'll look like this. Less dipper, more plow-like, or maybe a shoe. Shoes are kind of like ladles, right? Super gross, terribly unhygienic ladles. Our brains keep from exploding by being pattern matching machines. We see constellations of stars in the sky and turn them into shapes. But it's all just a matter of perspective. You've got to be right here and now to see the sky we do. Unless you're looking for a giant W, in which case you'll always find one of those. It might not be the constellation Cassiopeia, but it'll still be a pattern in the stars. So what's your favorite asterism? Tell us in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Never miss an episode by clicking subscribe. We couldn't do this without the members of our Patreon community, people like Brian Lowe and the many others who help us create and deliver great space and astronomy content. If you'd like to join our community, which gets you advanced access to episodes, as well as extras and behind the scenes content, Click here and head on over to Patreon. Oh. Oh.